Hey guys, SolarStore45 here with Mix It Up Gaming. Uh, I'm here to bring you This Is The Police. This is a brand new game, just came out on Steam not too long ago, and I bought it like a few hours now, and I have no idea what to expect. The cutscene was actually pretty funny. So, let's uh, first look at the... Eh, fuck. Let's just go into a new game and see what's what, shall we? Day one. Mayor Rogers, sex maniac. City Hall confirms rumors of Jack Boyd's resignation. That's us, by the way. Mar Mark War to be shown Freeburg Day before the worldwide premiere by the mayor's personal request. Can I click on any of these? No. Okay, so... Supposedly this is a uh, action uh, city, uh, like a building game. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least, that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. Okay. So we're a police chief. A, it seems like an honorary one, maybe? This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else, though I damn sure do blame them. <laughs> and don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. <laughs> but even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm going to have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. Okay. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. Okay, so we're attending a press conference. Uh, <laughs> I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. All right. Oh, I get to play now. Good morning. Yesterday, the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did this come to a surprise, or did you know about it in advance? Eh, well, the mayor discussed it. Mayor Roger told me he wants a fresh face running Freeburg PD, so no, it did not come from a surprise. Did you already name the... Did you know the name of your successor? No. Of course not, and I don't think the mayor's office knows who it is either. Okay. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy, Francis Kendrick, said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? Uh, perhaps. It sounds possible. If he uh, thinks a new office would help him serve a city, like, a little longer. Okay. Although Kendrick was acquainted, how many still believe the police are cooperating with the Mafia? Do you have anything else to say about this? If it helps the police... I do not, know. No comment. I usually prefer to answer all your questions, but in this situation I got to say no comment. 
Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Definitely not. That's just not possible. Mayor Rogers is a true professional, and he makes his decisions carefully. There is no place in our jobs for hard feelings. Thank you. How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. <laughs> Okay, then. Alright. Okay, pills. Alright. Well, I mean, we are old. Light up a cigarette. <sighs> Sorry if I'm being quiet through this, guys. This is I've I've never seen this any as of this. As soon before. as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Okay. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. <laughs> he never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. Mm-hmm. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> Don't, uh... Don't okay. betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then uh. how am I supposed <laughs> to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire any time soon. <laughs> 180 days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. All right. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. <laughs> well, that's not going to go over so well, buddy. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> All right. Well, this is our smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. This is already sleazy. Well then. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. <laughs> that is exactly what I would do. <laughs> All right, Jack Boyd. Only assholes join the mafia. Civil servants' wages will not be raised this year. People await a fresh look from the next police chief. Alright, so this seems like a day-to-day -day thing, but like I said... Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with your partners. Seems interesting. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines, or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. 
The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eaten here are ghosts. Huh. My deputy, Francis Kendrick. He recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history Interesting. of Freeburg. Interesting. Okay. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Alright. So it's yeah, this is this is where it I love that. I'm a 60-year-old police chief with a few months away from his retirement. I don't need anyone telling me how to do my job. Show me what you got. Fruitberg PD organizes upcoming work assignments into shifts for the day and tomorrow. Every shift, officers respond to crimes in progress. Detectives continue their investigations. You can freely move employees between shifts. All officers and detectives have uh, several important characteristics. Okay. Professionalism. I'm guessing that's what that is. Shows the overall efficiency level of your policeman. A figure around 150 is considered average. Any policeman who falls short of this mark is entirely reliable. While those uh, whose professionalism is considered higher than average is a safe bet even in a pinch. An individual level of professionalism may rise or fall over the course of their career. Okay, energy shows how tired your policemen are. The less energy your people have, the less reliable their work. Okay, the policeman who is exhausted might fall asleep at the wheel or make a critical error on the job. Your employees lose one point of energy after working each day and restore one point after they had a day of rest. Okay, so this is where it comes into... Um, this is where it comes into the uh, management aspect, as I, as I was saying. Okay, so your employees don't tell you everything. Some additional characteristics are hidden from view. For instance, some cops are lazy and will come up with any reason they can think of to take a day off. While others drink too much, you can only guess about these things, but you should be able to draw your own conclusions based on the behavior of your employees. Okay. Um, that looks okay. I, sure. I don't know. I don't really know what I'm doing, so... Okay. Shift B. Oh, we got a SWAT unit. Oh, you gotta put him down? Alright. Responding to calls is the bread and butter of police work. You'll need to send your officers to the crime scene before the timer expires. A mark on the map shows where the call came from. The further away from the police station, the longer it'll take your officers to travel back and forth. So, so the longer your people will be tied up and unavailable for upcoming work. Oh, shit. Okay. Hit and run. Okay. The easiest way to determine how difficult a task might be is to check how many units you are allowed to send on a call. The more units you can send, the more serious the alleged threat. Primarily risky missions give you the option of sending SWAT, but they must be accompanied by at least one officer. Hit and run. The number of slots is the only thing to consider. Any available information from the location of the crime scene in, uh, to the presence of the weapons and so on. All of this can tell you how seriously each case should be taken. A mission might look simple at first glance until it turns into a brutal meat grinder. Or a serious call can come in, which turns out to be a false alarm. Okay. A married couple exited a convenience store, saw a van in the parking lot, back over a homeless man who had been digging through a trash can. The jumper, uh, driver jumped out to help, but once he saw he, he hit a bum, he got in the back of the van and quickly drove away. Okay. Well, we're going to put her on there. Security on there. Go for it. Okay. Oh shit. 
All right, a fight. The last show, picture theater. Uh, let's do... Always have a backup. Always have a backup. We're putting price in, in there for backup. Um, a theater manager reports that during a show of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his way into the theater carrying a snowboard decorated with the word Rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violated, violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the theater security guard. Alright, well, I sent that out. This is a very interesting game. I, I do enjoy it so far. A hit and run report. Uh, when everything goes well, the police will capture the criminals and nobody dies. But truth is, sometimes the criminals manage to escape. Just try to avoid any dead cops or civilians. Dead cops will hurt your roster, and dead citizens will bother the mayor even more than the living ones. Uh, officers are unharmed. Good. Alright. So they arrested him. Okay, to the fight. Offender escape, officer unharmed, civilians unharmed. Damn. Okay, so he got away. Shit. What do we got going on now? Armed robbery. Okay, this is interesting. Let's uh, let's get Austin up in there, and then let's also get Tablaski. Put him on that. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed a videotape store and made off with their whole collection of adult movies. The criminals fled in a car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plate. The one, uh, the owner is Jeanette Brown, who lives in the suburbs. Go for it. Alright, and what do we got going on here? We got a fight between a Johnson, Rugen, and Klaas Law Firm. A brother and sister clash with one another after the deceased father's will. According to the lawyers, we don't dare separate them. Our security guard is off duty for the night. Okay. Well, we only got one cop available for this. So, hopefully it doesn't go bad. All right, successful assignments. All right. Hey, yeah, so so far this is nice. Um, I. Oh fuck! What do we got now? Assault. A passerby saw some teenagers attack an elderly musician, then run away with his guitar. All right. Well. Let's put a few cops on this one, because I do not fucking trust that shit. Alright, so we sent out some cops there. Oh shit! When your cops aren't sure how to proceed, they might contact you and ask you how to handle the situation. Try to deal with whatever comes up, but don't waste all your time on this stuff. You have plenty of other problems on your plate. Um, a vehicle in question is parked outside the Brown residence. The sounds of moaning and loud laughter can be heard through the window, living the window. Uh, open up police. Alright. Fender caught. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, that's how we should... Alright, so we got another report. Fender escaped. Officers unharmed. Alright. Well, not exactly how I would have liked to have handled that situation, but it's okay. Alright, what do we got? Oh, okay. Um... Alright, what do we got going on? Alright, so we got an assault here. So what happened here? Offender arrested, officers are unharmed. Yes. Perfect. Okay, good. So now they're on their way back home. Alright, end the day. Okay, so that was simple enough. If you think you need a couple extra hands tomorrow, you can order any cop to come in and work overtime. But if they're working flat out, they'll be much more exhausted. Somebody's bound to make a mistake. Okay, shift A. Uh, 
does this mean? Can I do anything with this? I guess not. Okay. I don't know quite what I'm doing, but... Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank <sighs> stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. <sighs> Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Yeah, right. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. Okay. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Nah. Now they know you're in business. So you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. Okay. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. <laughs> okay. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you huh. never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. Okay. Else? Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Okay. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. I do love this Even art style. dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. Hmm. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission. And his whole family paid the price. Jesus Christ. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people. Old men, women, even a few teenagers. Fuck. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. Jesus, all right. So it's, it's the Mafia. Well, guys, uh, I'm going to cut it here. Like, favorite, subscribe if you do like to see more. I am highly interested in seeing what this game has to offer. And I really do hope that you guys are enjoying this so far. Um, I'll see you guys in a bit. See you guys.